Hello everyone and welcome back to Tomorrow's and Beyond in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. In the previous video I discovered that the Orion carrier plane, which we are using exclusively as our first stage in this series, uh, couldn't really send much to Mars directly. Uh, we've been doing a lot of in-orbit assembly in low Earth orbit, but we are now at the Mars window and I would like to send a few things in support of our crewed mission, which will be getting uh, its final transfer burn soon. So. Yeah, I would like to send like various supply things, possibly a lander and stuff like that. And the single Orion carrier plane couldn't quite do it. So we are implementing stage two, if you will. Uh, not literally stage two, it's still the first stage, but uh, the first stage now consists of two Orion carrier planes. Uh, so we're still sticking to the idea that, that the Orion carrier plane is our exclusive first stage, it's just that there's more than one of them. Um, uh, a little bit of a bend to the rules, perhaps. Uh, this You might have seen a similar setup when I introduced my version of the SLS Block 2, but this is not an SLS core by any stretch of the imagination. It is uh, thinner, it has completely different engines, and a recoverable engine module, though this engine module was originally supposed to recover RS-25s. These are not RS-25s, they are the SE-2150 engines, which aren't the best engines to use in this particular situation since we are not lighting this on the ground, right? It is supposed to be a second stage. We Otherwise, it would be part of the first stage and therefore violating the rules. But it is a sea level optimized hydrogen oxygen engine. You can see very good sea level ISP. It is staged combustion as well. Uh, not as good vacuum ISP because it is sea level optimized and that's why it's not the best thing for this situation, but uh, the RS-25s, um, well, they, they actually just physically don't fit. <laughs> uh, this is the RS-25 reuse module, but you might notice that it has been scaled down. And the version of it that's full scale for the RS-25s requires a 10.1 meter tank. This is only a 7.5 meter tank and I already dumped the utilization in order to make it as fat as possible. Uh, so yeah, we we can't have the RS-25s fit on here, basically. So, yeah, that is the situation. So we're using these, even though they're not the best optimized possible engines for the job. Um, up here we have, and you can see why it has to be as long as it is. You know, we could have increased the diameter if we didn't need so much length, but we need the length because otherwise this looks really ridiculous. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the, the Ryan carrier planes are very long. So we have a, a upper stage for transfer here. It's got 50 MLI layers, hydrogen oxygen, which with the engine that we have been using, the SE2040V, which is a very good ISP Hydrolox engine uh, with 360 kilonewtons. So whatever you can do to get that, uh, but uh, with a 45 ton payload on top. So that is what we have right now. Those are just dummy options right now. This is the whole core is a generic core for testing. And that is what we're going to do. We're going to test it first. So we're going to test a few things. First of all, maybe we'll, we'll uh, send something important up. We can just send some a supply vessel instead of this generic tank. We'll get one ready, but I just wanted to show you the setup. And we now have two Orion carrier planes. We have the Nanami and the Mai. Mai is tail number 05 and Nanami 773. So that is what we've got. And the rocket is now called Duo because there's two of them. <laughs> so that, that seemed to fit. Anyway, let me get an alternate payload on it so that we can be sending something useful. But also we'll want to see the Orion carrier planes come down and see where they end up. Uh, when they are in this situation as opposed to their normal situation. They don't have as much speed, but then again they were overshooting a lot before, so we'll see where they go. Well, I haven't really uh, adjusted the pad for this particular dual Orion carrier plane setup, so that's not the best situation. And we're controlling backwards because this core is backwards, so I need to control from the docking port right now. All right, well, this should be interesting. We have to first get the payload into orbit and on its way to Mars, and then we are going to see about whether the carrier planes are recoverable or not. 
So two separate steps here. SAS on. Ignition. And throttle will be good. And launch. It's, uh, it's not a given because it has this low thrust weight ratio at the start because we are very much not lighting the core because that would be violating the rules. Uh, this is somewhat less efficient than the version with uh, SLS because we aren't lighting the core. <laughs> uh, if we could light the core right away and uh, make use of that, then that would be more efficient. But rules are rules. We actually will light the core before the boosters are out though. Okay, well, ignition at this point. That ship. Oh, wait! Oh, okay, I was confused. I think we ran out of fuel that time. We shouldn't actually use all the fuel. I think I clicked on the wrong tank and got confused. Okay, well, anyway. We need to get rid of the fairings. Ooh, procedural fairings. We could possibly carry more. We don't really want this core to get into full orbit. We want that package to come back down. It's got the parachutes and everything. So we just want to leave it suborbital in the right way. It's got little thrusters, so if it needs to adjust itself to hit a particular landing spot, they can do that with it. Um, those who are more professionally space inclined, if you will. But, uh, yeah, so we really don't need it having this much Delta V. I mean, Delta V is good. We just need it to have more, more payload on top. We've got a larger version of the supply vessel I previously made. Same sort of setup, uh, hypergolics, little engines, except now it's 12 kilonewton engines instead of four. Heat shield for capture with minimal ablator and then a tub of food, water, and oxygen. Altogether, a little bit over 40 tons. Okay, and oh, that'll be more than good enough. Okay, so probably a little bit high there. All right, separation. complete orbit with this. Right over Florida there. But that seems a long way for the Orion carry planes to get to. Okay, but we should check whether this little package can get down with its very different engines. So... <laughs> it's gonna knock into that. Uh, boop. Okay, we are in the atmosphere with this. It's got all the ablator it could ask for. Only question is, with this particular set of engines and with the resizing, whether it's still balanced and won't flip around. Okay, and splash down. Uh, we probably should have some floats to at least protect it from the splash there, but all right, we'll, I guess we'll recover it. It's not career mode, so it's not critical or anything, but it's down here now. Okay, we are going to have the payload do a fairly hefty mid-course adjustment in this case, and it'll arrive later rather than earlier. Um, it's a little bit too late to do the burn on this orbit. Whoops, I zoomed out quite a lot there. Uh, so maybe we can delay an orbit and see what effect that has. So yeah, 928 meter per second mid-course adjustment in order to do this. But it's probably simpler that way. And I did pack 2600 in the payload. So hopefully you can handle that and still get to some target around Okay, that'll be good enough for now. Let's wait and then do this maneuver. And then we'll check on the return, potential return of the Orion carrier planes. Overall, this thing can do more than we're making it do. 
We've got 4,381 meters per second and we're only using 3,887. Also, the payload capacity of this should be enough to send a mini Q over to Mars, which was what I was hoping for. And ignition. Now, this is one of those long hydrogen oxygen stages, 17 minutes. And we have to watch out that the periapsis doesn't go into the atmosphere. Though, you know, uh, cutting it close does have some positive oberthness. Uh, looks like it will be safe. It looks like we'll bomb out at about 147 kilometers here. Okay. Finishing this up here. And, alright. Let's see. Well, we'll just have to fix whatever we need to fix at the mid-course adjustment. So let's separate. This will be a disposed stage. Okay, that's good enough for now. So we've got a periapsis in Mars' atmosphere in a year, but, you know, hopefully they don't need supplies that quickly, otherwise we've done something horribly wrong. So, yeah, let's get this into light. And it is recharging. All looks good. Okay, just got the docking port, comms. We will see. Anyway, add that alarm for its mid-course adjustment. And now let's test where the Orion carrier planes end up, as we do. Okay, so this time I'm going to follow one of our Orion carrier planes down, and I'll follow the new one. Uh, we fully expect that it's going to end up in the water and, or explode or something. Um, we will adjust. <laughs> and uh, But it, it's a complicated matter, and I'll explain why in a sec. But throttle up SAS on, ignition. <laughs> and launch. So our sort of big problem is it's going to end up in a different place than when we only have one. When we have only, only have one, the goal is to get to Cape Canaveral, but it's going to fall short of Cape Canaveral as far as I know. But then in our current flight path, there's just a whole lot of water. So uh, what do we do about that? Really what we need is a stretch of desert. <laughs> we launch on one side of the desert, then on the other side of the desert or something. Maybe I should have, like, locations over to Sahara or something. Nobody else is busy using it, are they? Sand, though. You know what they say about sand. If we went to a higher inclination, we could land at Pensacola or something. But then, of course, it will be overflying, you know, the Panhandle of Florida and part of Georgia probably with the upper stage. But then, it is an upper stage, so it's not falling anywhere around there, at least. Unless something goes wrong. But then again, on this course, we were still overflying a chunk of Florida, too. Okay, lighting the core. shut down and separation okay well this is the new one our CS on we we don't need to throttle up we want surface 30 degrees zero roll and another issue is that we'll have to make sure that we have landing up uh, you know landing places for two of these Some place with two runways would be good. Okay, well, it is now level. And plunging down. It's not nearly as fast as it normally is, though. It does get a bit of a wiggle here. Well, we're here right now, so we're not going to get very far, I don't think. But maybe if we fit jet engines on, which I don't have right now, we can get it over to Cape Canaveral and that'll be our solution for the time being. 
Well, I can't maintain more pitch than this right now, so this is what we're going to get. Maybe a little bit nose heavy right now. I've been having tail heavy situations recently, so I might have overcorrected on that. Okay, we're just on atmospheric autopilot now. And we are here. It's not possible for us to glide all the way to Tampa. We'll just see how it handles and where the pitch is at and stuff like that. So right now we're looking at it using some up pitch so yeah it's a little bit nose heavy right now. But since it also looks like I'm gonna have to fit engines, jet engines on here, it's a good question whether that balance is gonna change so yeah we'll see. I'll test it without changing the center of mass and putting the engines on and then we'll see how it ends up. Well, while we're here, let me just check that it remains controlled if we dump all the propellant. Because the center of mass does change when we do that. I'm just going to uh, put it through some paces to make sure this is still okay. Um, does need careful handling though. We're pretty slow right now so I think I'll just take that for now. Okay and splash down. Safe splash down. Um, we're riding the waves a bit. And I'm just gonna revert and we got to add jet engines and see if that can solve the problem. Okay, I have added four jet engines to both planes and they are the NKA9 methane burning turbofans that were actually tested and so I feel that we'll go with those for now unless somebody else is willing to test a methane burning jet engine that would work in this situation. Uh, I'll be glad to use those instead, but these are the ones we've got. And these pods are empty. Uh, we just put the fuel into the main body of the carrier plane. We have available volume here that we aren't even using. Uh, and that's assuming, you know, the full volume of the plane is only being used to a certain utilization, just like the normal tanks. So, yeah. Anyway, we've sort of reshuffled the methane and oxygen a bit, and that's on both sides and that should give us a surplus of something like 20,000 methane units, liters. So I don't know if that's what we need, but anyway, these jet engines do not need to go down here. Uh, instead, we will action group those as action group six. And I'll have to remember not to start them too early because they'll just blow up. I will have to make an adjusted pad for this too, but anyway, SAS on, throttle up, and ignition, and launch. It's a little bit heftier than before because of the jet engines. I think maybe swapping out the oxygen for methane saves some some mass but we really don't know where the center mass is right now on the carrier planes the jet engine shouldn't be too heavy compared to the dry mass of the carrier planes them being more than 100 tons but we'll see the center mass should be right in front of the landing gear the main landing gear so it's about here whereas we've just put the jet engines basically back here so pull it back a bit, but we sort of needed to pull it back. It seemed a little bit nose heavy, so maybe this will be a solution. And we should be going to a heading of 75. Okay, core ignition. And shut down. And separation. And following the my carrier plane, 
currently 151 tons. Only going 2,400 meters per second, well that's surface, about let's say 2,800 orbital, about 1,200 meters per second slower than the Orion carrier plane normally does when it separates from its payload. A brief excursion into space here. Not as much surplus methane as I thought. Okay, bounce up time. Uh, the other plane is being ripped apart because these do have to come in in a very particular way in order to survive. Well, looking good so far. Yeah, it's getting a little bit wiggly. Um, I think I'll activate atmospheric autopilot right there. That's usually what I do when smart ASS gets wiggly. We'll go with the engines at under Mach 2. Right now we are at Mach 2.8. We're ending up basically where we were at last time. No surprise there, though we could have fallen shorter because of the engines. Well, now is the question, how much time does this fuel that we have give us? Okay, activating the engines. They're not going to hold us above Mach 1. 33 minutes, it says there. Well, let's see. Let's see what 33 minutes of jet engine usage gets us. As we go down, our fuel efficiency is not as good. We can dump the oxygen. We don't need the RCS anymore. Even in a descent, it's not able to hold this speed. Again, Mach 1 is not doable with these engines right now. We're talking about 16 tons of thrust with 142 tons of vessel mass. Just above 0.1 thrust to weight ratio, so yeah, that's not going to do it. For going past the sound barrier, we would just like to maintain some decent subsonic number. Mach 0.89 looks to be what we're going for here. Airliner speeds, basically. Well, I can see land up ahead, but we have five minutes of fuel left, so... Well, we're not getting to Cape Canaveral. Uh, we'll have to rebalance the fuel a bit. That means the payload is going to have to do more. It's possible if I had just done sort of a cruise speed thing and gone to a lower Mach number. Maybe Mach 0.82 or something, we would have been better off for the fuel. Well, we can still see land, but this thing is going to have to glide some. Okay, well, that's it for the engines. Okay, well, landing somewhere adjacent to Tampa Bay here. I, but there are airports here. Not too sure they're set to handle something like this, but on the bright side, no toxic fuels. Also, in this case, it's not coming in too hot. Okay, okay, flaring off too much speed there. Go down, please. Okay, we are a little bit iffy here. But... Yep. Ah, oh, we lost the body flap. <laughs> Great. All right. A little bit too slow on landing there. Oh, and bouncy. I'm pressing the brakes, but the air brakes aren't coming out. We do have actually drag chutes, but I don't think we need to use them. Okay. Well, I'm going to do some more experimentation off camera as far as getting the balance right and making sure we know what kind of payload we can get to orbit with this if it's got the jet engines on it. So the balance I mean between the methane and oxygen, 
so that we don't have too much oxygen and we have enough methane to get back to Cape Canaveral. I guess that'll be our solution for now as far as using two of the carrier planes as we did with the duo launch system. And so this is gonna be a way for us to get more stuff over to Mars instead of just what we can carry on one of them. And hopefully that'll make things easier as we continue with the Mars window here. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.